For the second time in 2020, Formula 1 heads to a new destination in this highly unusual season. This time we head to the Algarve in Portugal, a part of Europe known mostly for accomplishing a great tan, now becomes the centre of the motorsport universe with the teams heading to the Porto Mayo circuit. This circuit is used to hosting the GT cars of this world and used to host open wheel cars once upon a time, but now becomes for just three days the playground of the 20 quickest humans on the planet and it promised not to disappoint. Practice actually had more drama than your average Russian or Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tauri was busy illustrating how red hot the gas man has been this year whilst recently COVID stricken Lance Stroll forgot to socially distance from Max Verstappen at turn one in a silly incident. Max would go on to use a very naughty word in describing Lance Stroll's driving but the stewards decided that there was no one in particular to blame. And if that was only practice, who knows what drama qualifying could bring us. We would have to wait an extra half an hour for that as a drain cover came loose. The drain cover coming loose was caused by Sebastian Vettel driving over it during practice 3. Once back in place though, the session got underway. You once saw Ferrari powered customers die for their sins of deciding to have a Ferrari power unit with Mr. Saturday dragging his toothpaste into Q2. And in Q2 would even drag his car to 14th ahead of Sebastian Vettel once again fucked over by his Italian comrades, keeping him on the mediums when he clearly needed soft tyres to get through into Q3. Another disappointing exit from Q2 was the Renault of Esteban Ocon who proved a small distraction for his teammate in Ricardo's foray off of the track that led to him taking no further part in qualifying despite making Q3. Q3 in the midfield was its usual exciting self with Charles Leclerc winning that battle somehow in the dog of a car he has been subjected to racing in in 2020. At the front we saw another great tussle for pole position with Finn Valtteri Bottas looking the favourite after topping every session up until Q3. And after his final run it looked as though Q3 would be topped by Bottas until Lewis Hamilton finally used some of his talent to destroy Valtteri Bottas mentally and get another pole position. As for the rest of the grid, this is how they lined up. With not much room to be had in the first few turns, much was expected at the start in terms of contact. But the start on a greasy track thanks to a minor shower proved to have a lot less contact than expected. Into the first three turns, Hamilton kept his lead whilst his teammate and Verstappen squabbled into turn three for second with Bottas pushing Max out of the way for the place allowing Perez to have a run around Max for turn four. Sadly though, 2 into 1 in this corner was never going to work with Max trying his best to avoid hitting Perez but clipping his rear tyre. By looking at the onboards, contact here was inevitable. The reason it was inevitable is because Max Verstappen was turning left but he couldn't avoid hitting Perez. Not because Perez was too aggressive but because there wasn't enough room for two cars at that particular point in that particular moment. A handful of corners later though saw Lewis Hamilton lose position and the race lead to Valtteri Bottas as both Mercedes cars were struggling to warm up the mediums with Hamilton struggling more so to the point of losing second to Carlos Sainz in the McLaren. And it was because of the cold and damp conditions that the soft tyre was proving to be the tyre to be on which is why Carlos Sainz fought his way into a podium position with other soft tyre runner Kimi Raikkonen gaining 10 positions on the first lap to move up to sixth with his experience helping him avoid the chaos. It was so chaotic in fact for the first couple laps almost every single car coming through the final corner was side by side coming onto the pit straight in a sight that looked more like rush hour in a city rather than a race. More drama would occur halfway through the second lap though as Valtteri Bottas was still struggling on his mediums allowing Carlos Sainz to take the lead. Could it get more crazy? Sadly not as order was restored a few laps later with Bottas, Hamilton and Verstappen passing Sainz into turn one continuously forcing the Spaniard into fourth place. 
Another driver moving quickly down the order was the Iceman who was losing one position per lap as his soft tyre gamble had landed him an early pit stop and a mammoth task to reclaim the lost ground. On the move in a positive way was Charles Leclerc who after losing positions at the start was now starting to fly back up to his starting spot by passing the two McLarens comfortably and beginning to hunt down Verstappen who was hurting big time on fast degrading soft tyres. The only man in the field not suffering this fate was Pierre Gasly who was quickly dispatching Daniel Ricciardo on the pit straight and setting after the two McLarens ahead who had Lance Stroll for company as well. Daniel Ricciardo's comeback down to earth after his podium at the Nürburgring continued as he was forced into an early pit stop from softs to mediums. He would enter the battle for points properly later on. The two McLarens slide backwards continued with Gasly passing Norris with Lance Stroll intent on making the milkman his next victim. This though is not what he meant. Heading down into turn one, Stroll tried to be audacious and pass Norris around the outside but forgot. Lando was on the inside and turned in like an idiot, clearly forgetting the risks of doing so in an incident reminiscent of his with Max in practice. Stroll would pick up a penalty for this and another one for exceeding track limits too many times. He would later be the race's only retirement. After Norris came in for a new front wing, it was back to the battle for victory with Lewis Hamilton all of a sudden all over the back of Bottas. He would then pass him easily into turn one. This appeared weird to many as only a few laps ago, he was complaining about his tyres. <laughs> you may have thought with his contact with Verstappen that Perez was down and out, but after his early stop, was producing front-running pace whilst marching through the field and into the points. Could he salvage anything for Racing Point? Once Carlos Sainz pitted from soft to medium, it was time to make his way through the field and recover lost ground with ruthless overtaking. But little did he expect Kimi Raikkonen to be putting up an amazing fight to keep Sainz at bay in a fantastic fight for P10. Science would eventually pass Raikkonen, but at least the old dog showed that he still had some tricks. Perez, meanwhile, was continuing his recovery drive after eventually passing former rival Esteban Ocon in another great battle for position with Ocon, having a particularly stellar race, having not yet pitted. He would go on to complete a mega stint of just over 50 laps on the mediums. After a dominant stint from both Silver Arrows, they finally exited Formula 0.5 to return to Formula 1 in making a pit stop before going on to lap nearly the entire field. Will anyone ever stop them? Back in the midfield, Pierre Gasly was making his way back through cars trying to make it to the end in Ricardo, while Sergio Perez finally pitted from 5th for the second time for soft tyres, which would prove costly later on. In the middle of nowhere though, sadly for Red Bull was Alex Albon having a stunning race heading for zero points. Race by race, Albon becomes more irrelevant. I apologise, I forgot you were there. You may go now. Bastian Vettel quietly was making moves through the field towards the end and finally passed Raikkonen for 10th place in this seemingly never-ending battle between the ex-teammates that has gone on almost all season. During the final few laps, Esteban Ocon would finally make his pit stop for soft tyres and rejoin an ape just ahead of his teammate. He would later finish in this position after a superb drive. Perez's soft tyres though, with barely a few laps to go, had hit the cliff and he was now under serious threat from Gasly behind, but did hold him off initially with some very aggressive and forceful defensive moves. A lap later though, he would lose his battle to Gasly and lose position to a flying Carlos Sainz with just a lap left in a critical move for the Constructors' fight for third place. But all the headlines went to Lewis Hamilton taking victory and accomplishing a record-breaking 90-second win from Valtteri Bottas second and Max Verstappen in third with Hamilton now having broken Michael Schumacher's record for the most race wins in Formula 1 history and after the drive, he produced... I can't think of a more worthy person to break the record. Here is how the rest did on Sunday in Portugal. And here is how it affected the drivers and constructors standings.
So overall, it was another fun weekend at a new Grand Prix venue, but there was a couple important takeaways from this event. One is that we should try to race here again if we can somehow fit it onto a already stacked calendar in the years to come. The chances of this happening are slim to none, but this track is definitely one that cannot not be enjoyed. But this race also illustrated why we must get rid of DRS forevermore. The amount of times we saw a DRS pass that was easily made before the drivers even thought about entering turn 1 was enough to make someone lose all sanity and did make me lose mine during the Grand Prix. This race without DRS would have been so much better as we would have had proper battles for position like we had with Raikkonen and Sainz, not overtakes that resembled one car lapping another. Now I do understand and I do agree that this is a new track and we didn't know how powerful DRS was going to be at this particular circuit. I get that, but this is not an isolated case. Go back to the race at Spa for the Belgian Grand Prix. DRS there was way too powerful on the Kemmel Strait. 85 or 90% of the overtakes that were completed on that straight and during that race were comfortable. Comfortable overtakes are not exciting. What we want to see is actual battles for position. DRS can help that, but it should not be making the overtakes so incredibly easy, which they have been at times this season and that is quite a shame. DRS has had its time and it must be purged from Formula 1 before the 2023 season at the latest. We didn't need DRS back in 2007 or 2008 or 2009 or 2010, nor did anyone ask for it. So it's time to get rid of that. But next up is this weekend, the return of Imola to the calendar after 14 years away. Hopefully another famous chapter will be written into the history of Imola and you can join me this weekend for two watch-alongs starting with the only practice session of the weekend at 9am UK time on Saturday morning and join me again at 12.30pm UK time for qualifying at Imola with a live race reaction stream following on Sunday at 3pm UK time. So I hope to see you all there and until next time, it's been me, Chazza HD. Goodbye.